our executive director is going to be um, kicking us off. Uh, thank you. It will be recorded so we can reflect on this time uh, together later or share with folks that weren't able to make it. But without further ado, we have a lot of great information and I'm going to pass it over to Debbie uh, to get us started. Thanks, Molly. Uh, Joseph, will you hit the next slide? So hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're so glad you can be here with us. I was really hoping we were going to be able to be in person this year, um, but we heard your feedback and you know heard that uh, virtual meetings still felt safer and more comfortable, which totally makes sense. So I'm glad we can be together on screen. Um, tonight, our staff will talk through some of the highlights of our past year, and then our board president will give you a glimpse of our new strategic plan and where we're headed. Uh, next slide. Our mission is to build homes, communities, and hope. And we have been successfully on, achieving this mission. I can't get my picture. You know what I'm doing wrong? We've been successfully achieving this mission since 1985. They can't see me. For every family that we serve, we make a lasting impact, yeah. not mm -hmm. only on their lives, but on the lives of their children. Sorry about that. Looks like I got accidentally muted in the middle of that. Um, so there are dozens of more families, for every family we serve, there are just dozens that, that need our help. So we need to find ways to do more and to deliver more homes. Next slide. Oh, back one. There we go. So of course, the most exciting thing for, that happens for us this year um, was the Mackenzie Scott donation. We were so honored to have been selected as one of just 84 Habitat affiliates across the entire US to receive this donation. It's both a recognition of what we together have accomplished in our past and a vote of confidence in what we can do in the future. With this gift, we're gonna be able to buy more properties and build more homes and make the biggest possible impact on affordable housing in our communities. Next slide. So to date, with the help of all of you and all of those who have come before us, we've completed 53 homes since we started in 1985. Our most recent was this summer in Northboro. Izzy and Kaylee and their adorable son Emerson moved from an unsafe apartment without reliable heat and with leaky ceilings into a beautifully renovated condo. We plan to close on two more homes this summer and then another four next year. So we've made a lot of progress and we have a lot of exciting opportunities to come. I'll turn it back to Molly so we can get into more of the details. Thanks, Deb, and we'll cruise through to our next slide as we prepare um, for our next speaker. And again, you may get sick of these, but it's time for some pom-poms with some Habitat Trivia. Thank you, thank you. Um, Habitat Trivia is a wonderful way to learn more about the affiliate, but also could be a sweet way to score yourself a $25 gift card to the best store in town, Restore. We know you have some projects. We know you want to buy some things that you may or may not need. I have some eyes on some plates. Um, so let's start it off. Habitat for Humanity, Metro's Greater Worcester has built how many affordable homes for local families and veterans since its founding in 1985? Oh, oh my gosh, the chat's coming in hot. You don't even need me. Um, Sarah, who do we got? Oh, oh, I think... I think Julie, Julie D is our first A, and that is the correct answer, 53 homes, 53 homes. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, Sarah will be reaching out to talk through how to access your um, virtual e-gift card courtesy of, again, the only stores, the greatest stores, Reef. 
store. So trivia, don't worry, there's more to come. So if you feel like you're on it, don't worry, there's more trivia questions. Stay with us. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to ask uh, our uh, host, Joseph, to pin up Mr. Paul Rebello, our construction manager, so we can talk through our construction updates. So when you're ready, Paul, feel free to hop off mute um, and just let us know when you're ready to start by giving a next slide holler. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for attending the meeting this year. Uh, if we could move to the next slide, that'd be great. So as Debbie said, to, to date, we've completed 53 affordable units, um, and that's that's a huge number. We currently have four units in process of new construction. There's a single family house in Sturbridge on Cedar Street that's following our standard plan. And there are three townhouses in Worcester that are a modified version of the standard plan. Um, the three family uh, unit in Worcester has been in process for uh, a little bit over two years and the Sturbridge project about a year now. So thank you to everyone who's come out and made great progress on both projects. Um, they're progressing nicely and I expect them to complete in the next few months. There's also a single family house in Holliston uh, that is done and we're in the process of bringing in a family and doing family selection for that. So hopefully we'll have a family living there shortly. Uh, in addition to building houses, we've also been doing home repair projects. And to date, 38 home repair projects have been done. Currently, we have about seven of them in process. So there's been sort of a recent ramp up. It was a period last year where we weren't doing very many of these, but we're starting to get back into them. So next slide, please. Uh, our next major project is going to be Sunderland Road in Worcester. Habitat is in the process of acquiring two city lots, about 7,000 square feet each, uh, on the corner of Sunderland and Lake Ave. Uh, the lots are treed, so we're gonna have to do some more tree clearing before we can start building. Uh, the plan is to build uh, our single family standard plan on each of these lots uh, starting later this year. So we'll probably do groundbreaking in the springtime of this year and then construction towards the end of the summer. Uh, we should be able to get going with framing. So lots of opportunity for those who enjoy the framing part it's coming up again towards the end of the summer. Next slide, please. A little bit more on the home repair program. The home repair program is targeted at folks who are already in their homes, but for financial reasons cannot afford to maintain those homes. So the, the program looks at critical issues like a leaky roof or a set of stairs that are rickety or handrails needed kind of major critical things in order to keep the family living in their current home. Uh, we go through uh, funding through a number of means. Uh, there's some funding that comes from Lowe's, some from uh, grants that we get, and some of Habitat's own funds go into the program. But the intent is to make uh, the repairs affordable for the homeowners, and they often pay back a small loan that's 0% interest. So it's a great program for folks who are already in their homes but need a little assistance. We've done a number of these, the scope of work can vary quite a bit. Uh, sometimes it's been replacing a main door, adding a handicap door or a ramp, um, replacing flooring, patching ceilings and drywall, just a variety of different things. So we hope to continue doing these and even more in the coming years. One more slide, please. Uh, also very popular with the program, with the home repair program is replacing roofs. Uh, we have a recent partnership with Owens Corning where they supply the building materials for free and they go out and find a, a roofing contractor who will do the replacement and donate the labor. This is a huge opportunity for people who need to have their roofs replaced and just can't afford to do so. Uh, a roof is a major investment in a home these days and it's, it's not being taken on lightly. So uh, partnering with Owens Corning on this type of project is awesome. They, they not only do it with us, but they've done it with uh, several other Habitat affiliates across the nation and have done 400 such roof replacements to date. Um, one that we did just last fall uh, was uh, World War II veteran John Burke in Worcester. This is a 97 year old gentleman, still lives in his home by himself. 
and uh, needed a new roof. So it was a pleasure to be able to help him out and get that roof replaced. Uh, it also got a lot of media coverage. <laughs> you may have read about it uh, in the newspaper. It was on television. So we got quite a bit of press out of this program. Uh, and the family was very appreciative of the work. So it's great to be able to help folks who are already in their homes through this program. And I think that's it. Next up. Next up is me for trivia. Okay, true or false, coming in hot. Feel free to use the, the chat. So true or false, since Habitat for Humanity International's founding in 1976, more than 35 million people have partnered with the organization to access new improved housing. And I already see a quick true uh, from our wonderful Leslie Baker in the chat. So yes, very true. Over 35 million people have been supported uh, internationally through Habitat for Humanity's effort. And while that 35 million is a very impressive mm -hmm. number, don't get confused. We still have a long way to go to seeing through our mission and our vision of a world where everyone has access to safety and affordable housing. Um, so let's let's keep that net number going up. All right, another gift card, another shopper coming in hot to restore. All right, let's keep on keeping on. And I believe up next we have um, Kev McGuire with some restore updates. So we'll prepare Kev to be spotlighted and hop off mute. And whenever you're ready, Kev, uh, let us know with a next slide, please. Next slide, please. Great. <laughs> yeah. Well, hello, everyone. It is very nice being here with all of you virtually, um, celebrating our team of volunteers and paid staff. What an amazing year we had. Um, it's because of volunteers like Susie and Donna that our entire team had the ability to achieve all we did. Our Worcester Restore was working very hard during fiscal 22 to break sales records. The anticipation and the excitement were tangible week after week, month after month, me telling Gary he made it when he actually hadn't over and over again. Um, however, in July of 2022, Worcester achieved a longstanding goal of our affiliate. $1 million in sales over 12 consecutive months. It was, it was a celebration. And then soon after that, Worcester achieved the highest sales in one month ever. We processed an increased number of movie sets and corporate donations during fiscal year 22. Despite road construction, Ashland achieved excellent growth. As a newer store, Ashland's development and growth data is very impressive. Great milestones are definitely in Ashland's future. That's for sure. Our devoted team efforts generated, oh, next slide, please. Forgot about that. There we go. Our devoted team efforts generated a combined gross income more than $1.6 million. More specifically, $1,605,386 in fiscal year 22. We contributed $482,609 directly to our affiliate mission. Now that's something to be proud of. Our donors were very generous and we diverted more than 617 tons of reusable treasures from landfills. Despite the lingering challenges of COVID-19, we welcomed 2,342 volunteers who donated a total of 10,932 hours of time to our restores. This is an incredible number and we're very, very, very thankful for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our team of volunteers and, spade and paid staff have met every challenge with enthusiasm, pride, and creativity. It's obvious to me that our mission of building affordable homes motivates every team member to achieve more and more each day, never settling on the successes of yesterday. We will continue to view challenges as opportunities this fiscal year. 
We'll increase our foot traffic, online presence, e-commerce, and residential donor base. Those are just some of our top goals. We'll attract new corporate donors and raise overall awareness of our mission, which is obviously what drives us all. Our vision for Restore will never be realized without the incredible team of selfless volunteers and paid staff that I am so proud to be part of. Thank you, Susie and Donna, for volunteering with Restore and inspiring others to do so. You and our volunteers make our goals reality and our dreams and vision possible. I am truly grateful to all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Kev. This is incredible. Thank you so much for that update. And now we will get ready to spotlight um, Deb Hegel, our Vice President of Philanthropy, and have her share some of development's great accomplishments this year. So whenever you're ready, Deb, just say next slide, please. Okay. Well, uh, first, thanks to everybody on this uh, Zoom video tonight. I appreciate your attendance and um, we look forward to talking about all of the things that we have done in development. Uh, first, I just want to mention very quickly, a big thank you to our development team who worked so hard every day on behalf of our mission to build homes, communities, and hope. Um, Sarah Costello, Joseph Townsend, uh, Anna Bourgeau, and uh, Jerry Fitt, who also leads our Operation Playhouse Builds. Appreciate their help so much. They work truly hard every day. And I think I'm at the Women Build slide now, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Women Build brings the community together by building um, by building homes for women uh, who need affordable homes. Um, women Build is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising event, and we're so extraordinarily grateful to the women and men who build uh, during Women Build. They not only um, are choosing a day to build, but they're also peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on our behalf, which means they're contacting their um, people who they know, many different contexts to uh, ask them to support them. And through this, we managed to raise over $60,000 uh, in 2022. It was a tough year for us because we had been away for a couple of years because of the pandemic. And we came roaring back in uh, 2022 and managed to raise over $60,000 again to help build affordable homes in uh, our, um, our service area, 42 cities and towns throughout Metro West and Greater Worcester. And thank you to all of our sponsors that you can see here. We're so grateful to everyone. Rather than have me talk about it, it might be helpful for you to actually see a one minute video of what Women Build is all about. So we can move to that video now if, uh, we can. Women at Consigli Construction are outnumbering men at this Worcester job site. It used to be the good old boys club. It's not that anymore. It's all part of Habitat for Humanity's Women Built. The project, largely made up of volunteers, helps build affordable homes. <laughs> Jody Starrick is the first woman to be a project executive at Consigli. She has a lot more female co-workers now than she did 20 years ago, but says she wants to see more. We're definitely making a difference in terms of women in construction, women in STEM. You know, we're seeing a lot more of ourselves in the in the meetings that we get to participate in. Women in all roles at the company put on hard hats and got to work, doing whatever was needed to get these three homes ready to live in by next spring. Andrea Baham is a project manager and a mom who volunteers to help support other women. I try to teach my kids, like, we have to give back to everybody because not everybody is as fortunate as we are. Habitat for Humanity says single mothers are more impacted by the affordable housing crisis. In the houses Starrick and Baham are helping finish, will one day become home to families and single moms. I mean, I have two small girls, you know, so that gives you a whole new appreciation for what it's like to be a parent, let alone a single parent. So something like this to just help take one avenue of stress out of your life. It's the whole reason like women and, and kids and just to families in general, sometimes they need a helping hand. They don't always have the support. Megan Parsons, Spectrum News One. And now we are on our high heels and hard hats auction and gala slide. Again, because of the pandemic, this was the first one we were able to hold since 2019. And we were so uh, grateful to be able to get back together in person. 
um, the silent auction was held virtually, but we managed to get together for the live auction. And we um, managed to raise um, over $119,000, surpassing our budgeted goal. Thanks to our sponsors and supporters, who we really, truly appreciate. Um, you, there are so many that uh, supported us. Special thanks to uh, CCR Wealth, our platinum sponsor, and to our gala, um, Golden Hammer on a Rees, John Myra, D Diana Maddock, Maddock, and to our events ambassador, who you just met during our Women Built slide, Jody Starup, uh, pictured yeah, on the bottom picture. So we are so grateful and um, enthusiastic about uh, raising these funds for Habitat. And again, a big thank you to our team who enables us to do this. So next slide. One of our favorite programs is Operation Playhouse. I don't know if all of you are familiar with it. I, I think probably many of you are, but we are one of just a handful of affiliates throughout the US to be able to offer this program. And um, it's a program where teams come together, sponsored teams from partners in the community, and they spend the day building a playhouse for uh, a child of a veteran. And if you've never taken part in one, um, you come sometime and look or sponsor your own playhouse build because the reward for this uh, really are the um, surprise and the gratefulness of the children and the veteran families who receive this playhouse at the end of the day. Since 2014, we have um, built 393 playhouses for the children of veterans and families. And we're so proud of that number. And uh, we're so um, grateful that we can be involved in this. Our build-a-thons are coming up in June in Worcester and Framingham, or companies can build the playhouse right on their site. So rather than um, me going into more detail about it, we're going to see another one minute video on Operation Playhouse and uh, hope you enjoy it. And again, thank you. Ten new playhouses will go to veterans and their families. Habitat for Humanity hosted their Operation Playhouse Build-a-thon at Elm Park in Worcester Friday. Habitat's seven sponsors sent teams of volunteers to build the houses. Each veteran's family got to choose a theme for their playhouse based on their children's interest. Some included the New England Patriots, barnyards and castles. It's just such an unbelievable feeling to be able to not only uh, present them with this playhouse, but to feel like you've given back to someone, a veteran or a military family that has given so much to us. And uh, it's overwhelming when you meet the family at the end of the day and the children are excited and they play in their playhouse. Um, it's just the best feeling. 100% of the revenue raised during the Operation Playhouse events benefits Habitat for Humanity, Metro West, Greater Worcester, and its mission to build homes and hope for families and veterans in 42 cities and towns. I don't know how I follow up so much fun of, uh, of Playhouse, but hi, it's me again to talk through some of our uh, volunteer highlights. So thank you to uh, many of our volunteer faces that I see on our call today. Uh, it's so wonderful uh, that you were able to join us and you know see some of these facets maybe outside of the restore weighing of nails or outside of, of the construction site. Um, so next slide, please, as we talk through um, just some fun I wanted to highlight. Um, so this year alone, um, we had incredible given the pandemic and we're still not pre-pandemic yet but really uh amazing volunteer support um so much so that the number of um volunteer hours that we had had donated uh this year uh came to being the equivalent of about eight full-time uh employees added to our team i don't know what deb Murugo would do with uh, eight more full-time employees but let me tell you um, thank you. Thank you so much for being part of that. Um, I also think it's a fun, interesting fact when we um, see about the, the value of a volunteer hour. I know that's such a strange uh, thing to think about, but really we, we do. Um, and independentsector.org, which is a, a website I've used um, 
for quite some time now, now has valued uh, the volunteer hour at $29.95. So thank you to our volunteers um, for giving of that time. I also want to share a little bit about uh, our volunteer programs kind of coming out of our pandemic world, um, are, but we're still half one foot in, one foot out. I don't know what's going on, um, but some interesting transitions happen because of that. One of those has been uh, the introduction of virtual volunteer orientations, as some of you well know, because you've been through an orientation with me. Uh, we do require all volunteers to participate in an orientation prior to um, getting ready with their volunteer experience. Um, so this year alone is probably the most orientations I've ever done. I did 73 first time volunteer orientations this year alone. I know I counted every single one of them on my calendar, 73 uh, first time volunteer orientations. Um, and some of those orientations were just with one or two people. My most recent uh, had 10 volunteers in attendance. Uh, and we talk about everything from again, mission vision of, of Habitat, talk about restore and all of our construction opportunities, restore volunteer opportunities, and all of those logistics, as we, of course, value our volunteers, not just for the time that they're going to give, um, but we value in them in holding this information about our organization. We want our volunteers to be advocates and ambassadors for Habitat, because when we ask folks, hey, how did you hear about Habitat? It's usually because they heard it from somebody else. So anytime our volunteers can share our mission, spread our mission, tell somebody about our organization, hand out my information like confetti, like pom-poms. I don't know, but I want anyone and everyone, please, if there's even a slight interest that folks want to come and volunteer. As you will see as we go through this presentation, we have a lot of goals that we want to uh, achieve, um, and I'm excited to see um, how we meet those needs through our volunteer efforts. Um, which we got a lot of fun uptick on. So I'm always appreciative of the feedback. I know I have some wonderful friends on the call today um, who are excited uh, for further conversation and further feedback as we continue to grow our volunteer programs to match. Um, outreach events are starting to pick back up. That was definitely a, a big stream of how I would connect with people by going to community events. We're now seeing those on a more you know regular basis now, which is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to kicking those um, off as well as just next month um, participating in a couple speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a faith community, um, you're part of a knitting group. I don't know if you have friends and those friends in whatever capacity want to learn about Habitat for Humanity. I take this show on the road, folks. You give me a screen, you give me no screen, doesn't matter. Um, I will talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime about Habitat for Humanity. Um, so like I said, I'm speaking with a faith community in a couple of weeks, which I'm really excited about. So if your um, community would be open to that, by all means, please let me know. Um, little side uh, there. I also want to welcome a new um, Habitat Campus chapter that... Um, joined us uh, last spring, and that's over at Clark University, which is really exciting. Uh, so we now have an official Habitat for Humanity Club. I'm really proud of what Clark University is doing. We had a student um, who worked at a ReStore in Connecticut. She loved her experience. She wanted to start a club. Great. And she actually, you know, saw that initiative through uh, and they're moving through. They've done some build days. They're coming out to ReStore. And what I think is so exciting about you know, kind of the young, the young professionals of, of the Habitat for Humanity Next Generation is that they are transforming our mission, of course, of building homes, community hope, but topics of housing. And so this year they did a how to be a tenant program with their community of students on staff, Clark University's relatively known for a lot of their students live off campus and they wanted to help their peers navigate what it means to be a tenant. And I thought that was a really interesting way for them to connect with their peers, not just about Habitat for Humanity's mission, but just about wherever you call home, whether that be a rental or you own, it's all home, right? So how do we um, be the best tenants in that space? 
So really excited for that club, um, as well, of course, we continue to engage uh, a handful of our other habitat clubs that support us. Um, and last but not least, we are an AmeriCorps host site. Um, AmeriCorps is a program facilitated um, by the government. Thank you very much. And AmeriCorps members, uh, for specifically with our national program, uh, focus on serving a 10 and a half month uh, term with us, uh, that service term is paid a living stipend. Um, so uh, really, they're getting paid like $400 every two weeks. Um, so we're very much appreciative of the time that they donate with us. So if you've interacted with Curtis Lim, our current AmeriCorps national member out on the sites, he's been poking around here, there and everywhere. Um, Curtis is serving as an AmeriCorps member. Um, he has just about a month left with us, which is pretty wild. So he's coming up on completing his 1700 hour commitment, 10 and a half month commitment. Um, and we're looking forward to continuing to engage with AmeriCorps members as we move through. So thank you for my volunteer engagement slide. And up next, it's me. It's trivia. Okay. So I hope everyone was having their paying attention hats on. But in FY 2022, how many tons of reusable items has Restore, uh, the resource in Ashton and Worcester, diverted from landfills? Is it A? 455 tons. Is it B? 300. Oh, the chat's already blown up. You don't need me. You don't need me. Or maybe you do need me because no one's answered yet. Or is it C? 617 tons. How many tons? Throw it in the chat. A, B, C. Give us your best guess because you can then. Yes. Thank you. It is C. 617 tons diverted wow. from local landfills. Um, one of the ways I think about what and how Restore diverts tonnage is by associating with the fact that a baby elephant weighs about a ton. A baby <laughs> elephant roughly weighs a ton. So Restore diverted 617 baby elephants from local landfills, which is like a lot. Again, conceptually, I have a hard time thinking about wow. those things. But I can conceptualize 617 baby elephants. I see you laughing, Kev, but it works. I mean, that you can conceptualize 617 baby elephants we've kept out of a local landfill over at Restore. So thank you for all of those that participate in Habitat Trivia. I look forward to seeing you utilize your Restore gift cards, both in Worcester and in Ashland. Um, and again, if you are a trivia winner, please make sure you connect with Sarah um, in the chat so we can appropriately get your e-certificates uh, to shop at Restore. Over to you. Um, the Worcester Restore has some really great artwork right now. I'm just saying, if you're looking to spruce up a space. Um, but here we go. On to what's next. Both oh. there. Worcester and Ashland have a ton of artwork. Oh, great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the more the merrier. Thank you for that. Hot tip, hot tip. All right, next up, I'd like to welcome Carol Letney um, to our program. She's going to hop off mute and be pinned. Carol, when you're ready to start sharing, please just say next slide. You can go on to the next slide. Now. Okay. Uh, so family services, our homeownership program had some challenges in 2022. First, we wanted to start clearing up the COVID logjam of seven different projects. And simultaneously, we were trying to transition from Habitat as a mortgage lender to a third party lender. So these were our two big challenges. And the first success we had was with 24 Hitching Post in Northboro, because that was our first third party lender closing with Workers Credit Union. It also was the first time we had uh, the president of the American Society of Home Inspectors do a home inspection with our uh, future homeowners. And it's, it was a real educational experience. Uh, just to give you a quick recap of our other projects, 35 Main Street in Northboro, we expect to close in the next couple of months, 172 Concord Street in Holliston. There should be a lottery selection in about a month, 81 Harrison Street in Worcester, those three adjoining projects. There should be selections in a couple of months and 226 Cedar Street in Sturbridge, we expect to start marketing possibly in a matter of weeks. Um, another thing that we added for 2022 is we did some more future homeowner education in addition to the 
um, home inspection, which as I said, is educational. We added some Bank of Boston financial literacy courses. So our goals for 2023 are to do more third party lenders. We wanna add some more so we have more opportunities for our future homeowners, more choices. We wanna streamline the application process and do secure online applications. We also wanna expand the homeowner education courses. So next slide, please. So homeowner support, this is, this is ongoing. Uh, we have a number of condos, some of them are only two units, just duplexes, and we need to make sure that they have condo associations. So we've been establishing those. We're also working on some good neighbor programs. If you share walls or you share a roof, or not a roof, but a ceiling floor with another neighbor, it's really important that you are good neighbors to each other. Uh, we've done a lot of homeowner assistance uh, through Mass Half, the Homeowner Assistance Fund, the state's Homeowner Assistance Fund, and several homeowners have offset thousands of dollars in delinquent mortgage payments, some of those complicated by COVID. We also have helped homeowners to get property tax abatements when their assessments have gone out of line and blown up, you know, way over what value they should have as deed restricted properties. And for home repair programs, Paul is has touched on some of these. Um, Owens Corning, as he mentioned, we had two completed projects for veterans in 2022. We have three pending projects right now. The Holliston Senior Center came to us with a program that's mostly funded by their OPER American Rescue Plan funds. And we expected to finish one project today. It will probably be this week and another one in a couple of weeks. And we have two more projects in the pipeline and we're working on more. Um, we got a Lowe's grant in 2022. We approved three projects. Unfortunately, one of the applicants withdrew and we're, the other two projects are still pending. And we're doing everything we can to simplify the application process because I, I think this is COVID related, but people are really resistant to filling out paperwork. So any way that we can simplify that process, we will. And that's it for me. Thanks so much, Carol, for giving us an update on our families. And now we would like to do some incredible shout outs um, to our uh, volunteers and our community partner of the year. Um, so we're going to ask some of our prospective um, team leaders, Kev and Paul, uh, to get ready to kind of highlight our, our volunteers of the year and our community partners of the year. So next slide, please. Woohoo! So we want to thank everybody um, for, again, your participation on this call. And of course, we want to highlight um, our volunteers of the year. So this year, we'd like to um, thank and appreciate um, FedEx. So Adam Paradiso is on the call. Hello, Adam. Don't worry, we'll have a slide for you. Our construction volunteer of the year, Mr. Jeff Hallback. Thanks so much, Jeff, for being on the call, uh, as well as our Worcester Restore Volunteer of the Year, Miss Donna Howe, and our Ashen Restore Volunteer of the Year, Susie. Um, thank you so much. So up next, we'd like each of you to have your, your moment of shine um, as we, we bless you um, with just being amazing. So thank you so much. So I'm gonna pass it over to Deb. Um, to give out our uh, Community Partner of the Year Award. Well, hello again. Um, so pleased to recognize the Community Partner Award of the Year this year. Um, we give out a Community Partner Award um, at our annual meeting, and it's always um, someone that is very special to us that has given us um, consistent support in different ways over the years. And it's always a tough choice because we have so many great partners and so many great supporters. Um, but this year, we really wanted to recognize someone very special to us. Um, it's FedEx Corporation. And um, as we all know, FedEx Corporation is a huge company and um, an important company in not only our community, but throughout the world. And to have their support means so much to us. And I'd like to say that they have been supporting our affordable home builds since 2016, which is a number of years now. And a big part of that support comes from a, a, one of our local FedEx employees, Adam Paradiso, who is on the call. And um, Adam 
you have been consistent in not only helping us get the support, but also bringing teams of people to our home builds um, every year. And boy, those teams work hard. You can see a picture of them in this slide. Uh, Adam is over to the extreme right. So uh, he is there with his team. He is responsible for, for getting them together and also for helping us get the support from FedEx. So really appreciative. We can't do it without the many partners that we have at Habitat. And um, FedEx, again, is one of the most consistent and best partners that we have in so many ways. So thank you, FedEx, and thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. It's always a pleasure working with Adam to schedule his incredible um, team bills. And what always blows my mind is when I'm talking with uh, the groups from FedEx, they come from all over. You really pull them uh, across state lines sometimes to get them to come out to our build. So thanks so much, Adam. Next up, I'd like to invite Paul to come off mute and be highlighted to give all of the, the wonderful praise to Mr. Jeff Hallback. I can take just a moment. I, I want to reiterate Deb's comments. Thank you so much, Adam, for all you do to support us. You're incredible. Uh, and it's my pleasure to uh, recognize Jeff. Uh, we have many volunteers, many regular volunteers who come out week after week, and the core team of regular volunteers uh, are what make it possible to do the projects that we have. I know Ted and, and I could not accomplish what we have in Worcester out in Sturbridge without you. So thank you to everyone who comes out and helps us week after week. Uh, I wanted to point out Jeff as sort of a special level of contribution. Um, not only recently, I've worked with Jeff since I think the Vail Street project several years ago. And Jeff comes out every week and does his best to contribute to building whatever we're doing. Um, he gives it his best. So I, I greatly appreciate all that he does and, and the attention to detail he puts into his work. Uh, additionally, through Jeff's employment, um, he's been very generous in providing us with a number of pieces of equipment. And uh, over the last few years, the pandemic effect has uh, resulted in many fewer volunteers being on site and having heavy equipment such as a telehandler or, or boom lift um, have made a significant difference and allowed us to keep building and keep building at a very good pace. So uh, when it was time to do some heavy lifting and get roof trusses up both at Harrison Street and Cedar Street, Jeff came through for us and provided a telehandle. He even came over on, on days when he was working to operate the equipment, make sure we were able to set the trusses uh, and move forward. We were doing siding out in Sturbridge, uh, you know, working high up on ladders is not everybody's uh, cup of tea. So Jeff was kind enough to get a boom lift for us and all of that heavy siding work uh, up high was done very safely off of the boom lift. And I think even a few folks had a very good time operating the boom lift, so it was entertaining as well. So Jeff, thank you so much for everything you've done for us and I hope you continue to work with us for many more years. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we're so honored to have you be part of our team. Um, Oh, yes. And yes, a comment from Jason Sobel, another volunteer. Jeff is veiled to make personal appearances. Uh, contact his agent. I'm assuming that agent is Mr. Jason Sobel. So all uh, his new award and pom-pom fun to get Jeff on the docket, please go through Mr. Jason Sobel. Um, next up, I'd like to invite um, Kev to come off mute so we can shower um, our Restore Volunteers of the Year. Yay! I am. Uh, I did it. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, this is an exciting opportunity to thank people who give so much without expecting anything in return. It's just an amazing feeling having volunteers coming in. The funny thing to me about both of our volunteers of the year is that I have seen our volunteers of the year in our stores, but didn't realize they weren't paid staff until the masks came off. So it was kind of funny. I, I recently met Donna for the first time, though it wasn't the first time, it was the first time without a mask. Um, but we are pleased to recognize Donna Howe as um, Worcester's Restore Volunteer of the Year. 
And as the slide says, Donna joined the Restore in August of 2021, and she got going like she had been there forever. <laughs> um, she had first come in and had a conversation with one of the staff members about the Restore and our Habitat mission, and then she decided she wanted to volunteer. That's such a great way of getting volunteers is when they come in, they see what we're doing, why we do what we do, and how we do what we do, and they want to come in and help. Donna's personality has been energizing on our sales floor and the customers and the team members love her. Um, she's always willing to step in and help. Donna volunteers extra days for special sales events or to step in when a team, a paid staff member can't be in or even to cover team vacations. Um, we appreciate you a lot, Donna. Thank you for all you do and um, congratulations. Well-deserved. Thank you, Donna, for being part of our Worcester team. Um, it's always so fun when you're on the register. I love seeing how you interact um, with our shoppers and our other volunteers. And um, I'm always encouraged to purchase something when you are behind the register. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and as we move to the next slide, um, Kev will continue with our Ashton Restore Volunteer of the Year, Miss Susie. Well, let me let me tell you something about Susie that I have I have witnessed since day one of first seeing her. She should wear a step meter because she does not stop all day long. Um, Susie covers that store I don't know how many times. Um, but our Ashland team is very excited to recognize Susie as the Ashland Volunteer of the Year. Susie's been with Ashland and is actually Ashland's dedicated, reliable Tuesday volunteer for over a year now. She's consistent, reliable, and her organizational skills, as it said, are very valued. Um, she always has a smile on her face. She's really, a, she just gets the job done. She's busy, busy, busy. Um, and she greatly helps the store get back into some sense of um, order after a Saturday. Um, we appreciate the fact, besides Restore, that Susie also volunteers on the build sites. That's just double, double, double volunteering, I guess. I, I don't know. But we appreciate you very much, Susie, and we look forward to the, your continued volunteering. Thank you so much. Thanks, Susie. It's a pleasure. I remember uh, doing a volunteer orientation with you and, and just been so much fun um, having you aboard. Um, so I'd like to um, welcome Joseph to come off from behind his slide share. And this is the man behind the slideshow, uh, Mr. Joseph Townsend, uh, to thank our Operation Playhouse volunteer captains. I want to say a very deep and sincere thank you to the nine Operation Playhouse captains listed here who helped make Operation Play the Operation Playhouse program keep going. They helped Jerry Finn, our Operation Playhouse team leader, who creates a wonderful environment for the build teams and the vol and the families. Uh, the captains receive training and they help guide the playhouse builds and help train the uh, volunteers who are on the site. Paul Hegel even sometimes volunteers to run Playhouse Builds on his own, and he's driven the truck many times for the organization. And uh, Playhouse uh, captains also help with loading the truck uh, prior to the event uh, at our storage facility. Richard Morrison has even helped um, Jerry Finn Cut the playhouse kits beforehand, and that's very involved. There are a lot of pieces to the playhouse, and they they get Jerry and him get together, and they they cut the wood um, very efficiently. And we're greatly appreciative of of his help and support. We greatly appreciate all that they do for Operation Playhouse. Thank you, Playhouse Captain. Thank you, Playhouse Captains. And now if you're interested in becoming a Playhouse Captain, uh, Joseph and Jerry are facilitating a Playhouse Captain training on February 25th. So if that, um, if you want to be part of the Operation Playhouse program in a volunteer capacity, please reach out to myself um, or Joseph directly as we'd love to get you looped in on the training. It's about a four hour training um, and we go from start to bottom on how we build 
our playhouses. So on the next slide, again, we'd like to give another shout out and a thank you to our regular volunteers. These are volunteers that are making a contribution with us um, weekly, if not multiple times a week. Uh, this is the steam that keeps uh, Paul and Ted and Curtis going and our house is being built. Um, so thank you to everyone who comes and not just on our construction sites, but at Restore, but even in our affiliate offices, uh, the volunteers that support the work that we do um, behind the curtain, behind the screen um, of our sites. So thank you so much. Again, we uh, love you and we appreciate you. And I pom-pom away for you. Um, and we can't wait till we can continue to keep on keeping on. Um, so thanks again. And as we move through, I realize we're coming up on our uh, on the last final 10 minutes. As we move through, uh, we're going to ask um, for next slide. And we're going to welcome our board president. Oh, I have a trivia question. How could I forget? Hello, trivia. All right, last call for a $25 gift card to the store, the only store, Restore. Since 2014, oh, Jason Sobel right off the off the bat. Um, oh, I missed Mr. Weber on my list. Hi, David. Hi, Louise. I'm really sorry. Oh, it's embarrassing. Thank you. You are everything. Um, but it looks like we have a winner in the chat, Sarah will connect with you. Can't wait to see you spending those gift cards at Restore for all the treasure that you know you need. Um, wonderful. Okay, and now I got too excited and ahead of myself uh, as we go for next slide and welcome again our board president, Joe Frank, um, to hop off mute, get pinned um, up top. There he is to talk about our strategic plan. Again, thanks so much, Joe Frank, our board president. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Molly. Uh, thank you, everyone. Welcome uh, to our annual meeting. It's real. It's humbling to just listen and to um, to be associated uh, with with Habitat. So just thank everyone and and recognize all the volunteers, the the staff, our board. Uh, congratulations to our honorees. So next slide, please. I'm going to talk about the uh, strategic planning. Uh, we do a strategic plan every three to five years. Uh, we just completed our strategic plan. Um, and, and this is, um, these are our goals. This is a, uh, it comes at a decisive moment, uh, a transformational moment uh, when we are successful to uh, do more uh, than we have been able to do. We are looking at constructing 30 homes and completing 36 home repairs. In comparison, we've to date since 85 have completed 53 homes. Our family services to prepare and support families for home ownership success, and then financially to complete a transition to third party mortgage and construction financing, ensure a sustainable organization through our restore and fundraising programs. And, and we are at a sustainable organization uh, level, but there is just more to do. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we have initiatives that underpin uh, our goals. Um, looking to establish uh, an infrastructure and partnerships to develop properties uh, with third party providers, enabling us to uh, break from our traditional program of, of one off builds. It will be complementary to our current build program with the volunteers. But particularly with our uh, gift from Mackenzie Scott, doing more to make that impact and to um, present that is, is paramount to uh, how we can move forward. It, it requires that we, we have new processes. It's going to uh, require that we look and evaluate all of our processes across all the departments and functions streamline those we can, um, reducing risks and costs. This is already underway and we've heard some of those initiatives. Uh, we have the volunteers and, and partnering with uh, Quinn Sigmund Community College, uh, Worcester uh, Polytech Institute in, in looking at um, how we can establish databases and share information uh, more seamlessly. Family services, reorganizing family services with capacity expansion uh, to improve the selection process and provide needed support uh, for the homeowner families. 
our restores, um, expanding the restores to what we look at fully fund operational uh, expenses and to leverage Mackenzie Scott donation to enhance uh, fundraising opportunities. So these initiatives, uh, several are underway. Uh, we will look to implement all of these uh, as, as the uh, tools to enable us to hit our goals. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> and there are underlying principles foundational to uh, how, we, um, how we work, how we um, interact with each other, our uh, boards, our, our staff, our families. Diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, foundational cross all affiliates and families. Uh, I've read a recent, um, in the business, Worcester Business Journal, uh, the, the editor, Brad Kane, um, moved off the question of what is uh, DEI or why DEI? And it's really to be foundational. It's how can we achieve better diversity, equity, and inclusion? Not why is it important? We, we know it's important. We advocate for safe and affordable housing policies. Our volunteers and donors are fundamental to our success. And we are a sustainable organization with the financial stability to seize new opportunities and fulfill our mission. So these, these are our strategic plan. Uh, this is our strategic plan uh, and the initiatives that we will be working through over the next three years and beyond. Thank you. No, thank you, Joe Frank, for going through that. Um, I'm excited to see where we go. Um, can't uh, can't wait to, to continue to be part of, of all the magic that we have going on. Uh, we want to give a big thanks to our friends over at the Girl Scouts um, for letting us use this Zoom link. We're so appreciative of that partnership and sharing magical technology. Um, and also at this time, we welcome guests. Um, if we have questions, comments, concerns, you know, let's use that time now. Um, if you feel so free, or if you have something you want to ask in the chat, um, we can stay on for as little or as long as the community needs to ask questions of uh, of any of us. So I would again encourage folks if they have questions um, to put them in the chat or to just um, come off mute and sh uh, shout it out, shout it out loud. Um, but thank you so much for joining us for our program this evening. Um, boy, oh boy, did we do a lot and boy, oh boy, do we have a lot more to go. Um, and we're excited. I'm excited about it. I'm going to keep these pom-poms forever because you just never know. You just never know um, when, when we need a pom-pom moment. So again, we can stay on. Um, we'll give folks another minute or so if there's if there's no questions or if you feel like you want to contact any uh, one of us independently, please feel free. You can find um, all of our contact information on our website, um, www.habitatmwgw.org under our um, About Us. Um, so feel free to directly reach out to any of us. Um, thank you, Julie, a lovely note uh, in the chat. Thank you for everyone for engaging with the chat. Um, and we're so excited to have you. So if there's uh, no further questions, I wish you all a safe and healthy uh, evening and the rest of your week. Um, and we look forward to seeing you out on site, out at Restore, in our offices, in our space, um, and shopping at Restore with those gift cards. Use those gift cards up. Come on now. All right, Molly, I think we have a couple of questions coming in the chat. Oh my gosh, where? Thank you everyone for attending tonight. We're so glad that you were here. We've got so much work to do, but um, the past year we've really spent a lot, a lot of effort behind the scenes getting, getting ready so that we're able to take on this challenge and we're ready to move forward. Um, let me see if I can find- Yeah, we have a question from question. Jason in the chat about sweat equity hours for our uh, next set of homeowners as- those homes are relatively complete. So between Deb and Carol, I'll let you take it away. 
Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question, Jason, and um, definitely something that we are talking through. We are obviously going to have to be creative uh, with our next batch of homeowners. Um, you know, we have talked about, you know, we obviously, we have lots of, um, lots of opportunity always for homeowners to volunteer at the restores to get their hours in, but also as we are expanding the number of builds that we are going to be taking on next year, it will give more build site opportunities um, and more locations that our homeowners can, can get out to. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about timing and how we navigate that and um, what types of agreements we put in place with our homeowners to make sure that they get their hours done. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a little bit, a little bit unique situation for these homes uh, based on all the challenges that we had in getting to the finish line with, uh, with bringing families um, to, to the point where they can be selected and actually move into their homes. So uh, we are super excited about streamlining and expediting our process so that moving forward, we can have a more steady streamline, um, actually a pipeline of homeowners as well as a pipeline of houses. And when those two things sort of dovetail together, um, it should really facilitate that part of the process. And we should add that we're adding as many educational opportunities as possible. And we're gonna keep stressing that and we also reduced our total number of sweat equity hours to be more in keeping with people who are so busy. A lot of our applicants have more than one job and more than one child mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, responsibility that they're dealing with. Right. So the 300 hours is our, our new standard, um, which is great. Um, but yeah, you're right, Carol, thank you for, for that point too. The educational opportunities, I think, is really helpful for a lot of our homeowners in helping them to be successful long term. So I thought I saw another question after that. Molly, did you see it? Um, I did not. If you asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Joe. Uh, there's a question from Susie uh, regarding oh. the Mackenzie Scott donation being leveraged for fundraising. And, and that's an acknowledgement that um, we were uh, evaluated um, and, and chosen as um, being a um, worthy uh, affiliate to to be uh, the recipient of a donation, and and uh, it is money begets money in in the sense that we, we can go to donors and identify that we have been selected as a donation that is a worthwhile uh, for every all the reasons that we talk about. But um, it is a conversation when uh, we're raising going to significant donors. So. It takes us to a new level, and that is what we talk about being transformational and, and how we're going to uh, position uh, ourselves and, and the different ways of, um, of moving this uh, affiliate forward. Um, but the entire donation is going, it, we're, we're spending the entire donation. We, we are purchasing property. Um, we are going to engage uh, developers. So. Um, we will certainly put the funds to, to good use. Thanks for that question. And I believe we have a question from or a comment from Jeff. Are you able to get yourself off mute, Jeff? I should be off. Oh, yeah, there you are. Hello, friend. Hi. Yeah, good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, first, I, I do want to thank everybody, especially Paul and Ted, for nominating me for Volunteer of the Year. And one other thank you. And one other comment, one of the screenshots that did list all the volunteers, and that's very important to me. Um, and I'm glad you're recognizing that. Um, over the years, I've, I've been involved with Habitat since 2007. And these folks come out day, day in, day out, week after week, month after month, in all sorts of conditions. So I'm glad you put them up there. Their name's up there. I know who they are. And it's it's uh, it's a it's a true blessing to have them working for our cause. So I just wanted to I just wanted to say that. And again, thank you very much for nom nominating me for Volunteer of the Year. No, and I thank same. my company too, as as Paul had mentioned. They do give us thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Thank you, Jeff, for being an, an advocate and an ambassador. And we really appreciate the conversation and the feedback and you know, acknowledge um, that, yeah, we, we cannot do this with the, the 27 staff 
uh, between our affiliate offices, our restore and our construction team. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. All right. I don't know. I just did another scan of the chat. If there um, are any further questions, feel free to, to throw them in. Um, if not, feel free to get yourself off mute, but also feel free to get yourself some dinner. Whatever choice makes sense for you, we are here for it. Um, awesome. All right. Well, with nothing further coming on through, um, I want to again, thank everyone for joining, for engaging with my pom-poms um, and for just chatting away. So have a wonderful and safe evening and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye thank now. You, thank, you, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.